deliver them. Because of your position in God, because you have treasured him, you valued him, you placed him first, and every other thing is behind you. Because of that, I will answer that prayer and deliver that person. Now there will not be a thorn on your way anymore. He will deliver one who is not even innocent. And he will be, uh, and that person will be delivered through the cleanness of your hands. That person will be delivered through the cleanness of your hands. They are not even innocent. They have done things to you and to the kingdom. But God said, because of you, because of you, because of the relationship we have together, I will deliver that person and now you will have peace. That broke me down right there. And number two, he said, after you have, you, you, you have valued the kingdom of God like a treasure, the second thing is to seek after that kingdom. The kingdom of God has to be sought after. Seek you first the kingdom of God. Seek after that kingdom. Seek you first the kingdom of God. We all know that the, the Matthew 6, and we all know that. Seek you first the kingdom of God, and the rest of these shall be added unto you. Amen. A lot of times we seek the rest. This scripture here has been the scripture that I've used all my life. That was the first scripture I know in the Bible. <laughs> you know? That was the first scripture I know. Seek you for the kingdom of God and none other things shall be added unto you. So the kingdom of God has to be sought after. The kingdom of God has to be treasured. The kingdom of God has to be placed in the highest importance. The kingdom of God has to be sought after. Chase after it like you chase after wisdom. Chase after it. Proverbs, I think it was chapter 3 or 4. He said, that was wisdom speaking. He said, I go to those that seek me. And those that seek me, find me. Seek after the kingdom of God and every other thing shall be added unto you. There's a scripture there, but because of time. Let's just read only one. Only one. Matthew chapter 6. Let's look at 28 to 34. Matthew chapter 6, 28 to 34. Seek you first the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has to be sought after. The kingdom of God don't come to you. We run after that kingdom. We chase after it and that kingdom will, you know, you will find that kingdom. And every other thing now will follow. Matthew 6. And why do you worry about clothes? I like the lower one there. Why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or sing. Move on. Yet I tell you that none, even Solomon, in all his splendor and glory and none of that, dressed like one of them. None of them. Then. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not take care of you? Go on. So, do not worry. Saying, what shall I eat? What shall I drink? What shall I wear? Ladies, we do that a lot. What shall I wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly father knows you already need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you as well. Hallelujah. Go on to 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Tomorrow will worry about itself. The one I like the, the, the best is each day has enough trouble of its own. Each day. And if your day don't have enough trouble, come, let me give some of mine to you. You know, each day has enough trouble of its own. From the, 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 the you're going to work, traffic is, you're just going, your traffic is already driving you crazy. You go to work, they say you come late. Your co-worker is driving you not. And you come home, mommy, what's, what's for dinner? And all of that, your people, who put this thing here? The kitchen is a mess. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Seek you for the kingdom of God. And the Spirit of God will go and minister to those people and you will have peace all around. Yeah. Seek you for the kingdom of God. He said the kingdom of God has to be sought after. We need to learn to seek after the kingdom of God. First, and those things, and the more that pastor said, the more we seek after those things, the more they run. You know, you're chasing them, they're running. You're chasing them, they're running. Because they're the power, the madness that's supposed to attract them is not there. Hallelujah. And he said to me again, the third one, first one is um, the kingdom of God is like a hidden treasure. The second one is that the kingdom of God has to be sought after. And the third one is that the kingdom of God has to be built. Building the kingdom of God. Building the kingdom of God. We all need to contribute, contribute to building that kingdom. The kingdom of God has to be built. God 
however, is the ultimate builder. Amen. No one can build like him. He institutes the building. He originates the building. He is the pillar that holds the building. But we have a part to play. If that kingdom has to be built, we have a part to play because we're the one inside that kingdom. God has a magnificent kingdom in heaven that Jesus said we should pray to come to us. Jesus already seen what is up there. This is good. This is beautiful. This is glory. You all should pray that that kingdom should, you know, let it come to you guys. We're having fun up there. But let that kingdom come down to you guys and you will see what I'm saying. He said the kingdom of God has to be built. We have a part to play. Let's look at Jude, Jude chapter 1. How do we do that? We build ourselves up in the most holy faith. Jude chapter 1. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God has to be built. We need to build ourselves up. It will start with us. Building the kingdom of God will start with us. You, yourself, and you. Me, myself, and I. The kingdom of God has to start from me. Building it. Build yourself up. And you will find out that the rest will be simple. You build yourself up. You build your children. You build your family. You build your home. You build your neighbors. One another as you gather together will build each other up. When you see a sister down, you build that sister up instead of casting that person down. You see a brother up, you look down, you build that person up instead of casting that person down. We build one another up. This house here, we build each other. When we come together, when there is a need in this house, everybody contributes, we build each other up. I hear saying, people always say the days of Moses. Moses was one man that built also the kingdom of God. Notice where I hear people say, uh, uh, after all, in those days, when, they, when, when the people contributed enough, Moses said there is enough. There are people there, stuff. but in these days, all the pastors never say it's enough, it's enough. Notice they have bills to pay them. <laughs> I, hear, I hear people say that a lot. These days, all these pastors, they never say it's enough. It's bring, 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 bring. Because Moses didn't have every month bill to pay. There was no bill there. You know, you don't pay rent. They, they did their own house. There's no rent. No employees. Any of them will say, okay, this month you guys have done enough. You know, so we need to consider, we need to consider, don't, 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 don't let the devil fool us. As you're giving it to the kingdom, you're giving it to yourself. We need to build each other. The kingdom of God has to be built. Jesus stood at the place where they were given, um, when they were giving offering, and he looked at the widow, so this woman gave it, not even though what he gave was one tiny little thing. Why? Because that little thing he has, he tried to, he valued it more, what why to give it away so that the kingdom of God can be built. We need to treasure the kingdom of God. We need to build the kingdom of God. Build yourself up. Learn about, grow in the Holy Spirit, grow in the Lord. Build yourself up. Now begin to build somebody else. Begin to build yourself up. Don't tear each other down. I thank God for what Pastor Don is doing out there. Yeah. And to God be the glory, we, con we all contributed to it. And the kingdom of God is getting built up there too. So God is not going to come down to earth to build that kingdom. We are the one that will build that kingdom. God on institutes it. This kingdom has to be built here. But I'm not going to come down to build it. We are the ones that will build that kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. And again, he said to me, number four. The kingdom of God has to be received. I give it to you, you receive it. You reject it, I give it to somebody else that needs it. The kingdom of God has to be received without any shadow of, the, uh, of doubt. As simple as that, it is so difficult. You tell some people, you, you know, you minister salvation to them. They look at it as if, really, that's it? Confess the Lord Jesus as a personal servant and say, oh, thank God, welcome to the kingdom. And they're looking at you. That's it? Yes, that's it. Physically, you don't see a thing, but within your spirit, something is done. Angels already did their own collection and everything. They already wrote your name down. Everything is done. Blah, 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 blah. It's all gone. But you don't see a thing. The kingdom of God has to be seed like a child. It has to be received. Let's look at Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 10. 13 to 6. The kingdom of God has to be received with no doubt. No human reasoning. No, no physical intelligence. Forget that intelligence. 
Sometimes too much study puts us in trouble. You know? No intelligence attached. Receive it is a free gift. Freely you have received, freely give. Receive it with a free it's a free gift. Mark th- chapter 10. 13 to 6. Mark 10. 6. Oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Mark chapter 10. And they brought young children to him. That he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. When Jesus saw this, I'm reading the one below. When Jesus saw this, he was furious. He was displeased. He was angry. And he said to them, let the little children come to me. And do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. The kingdom of God belongs to such as this. And he said, I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. What is he talking about? Like a little child, simple faith. You know what? Sarah will come. Mommy, can you buy me candy? Oh, yes, sure. Thank you. And she will run. I didn't even give her candy yet. But she said, thank you to her. She's going to get it. And that makes me feel like I will give that candy to her. You know? Mommy, can you buy me my own bed? Sure, you will get it. Oh, oh thank you. And the girl will be like, Come on, Sarah, you don't even see the older we get, we reason too much. <laughs> we reason too much. And that's what Jesus is saying here. If anyone cannot receive the kingdom like a child, like faith, receive it simple. Don't question me. You don't have to see it. You don't see air. That's what a little boy asked the grandmother one day. Because the, 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 the little boy belonged to a faith where the mother would minister to him. And the little boy, I, was, I, I think it was her, his aunt. And the aunt was like, uh, you know, you, you, you all, you are here, your mom, we thought this is your God, God, God. Have you seen God before? And, and the little boy was like, Auntie, have you seen air? I said, no. He said, have you, uh, have you seen a million dollar in your life? He said, no, I haven't seen a million dollar. Have you seen air? I haven't seen air before. Then what makes you think that there is no God if you haven't seen it before? Because this boy was raised up, but was taught by his mother. We reason too much. And further education, we even go further and deeper and deeper. I'm not saying education is good. Believe me, I'm going further too. You know, but the more we go, we kind of put everything on our shoulder. We limit God. We apply our intelligence. We begin to question God. And sometimes God will look at it. You know what? When you're ready, come back. You know? Education is good. But we, we, we question too much. We have to receive it as it's given to us. Simple and plain, receive it like that. And move on. No question. You begin to see it work in your life. Amen. And again, he said to me that the kingdom of God has to be taught. T A U G H C. It has to be preached. The kingdom of God has to be preached for you to grow. We have to teach it to our children. We have to teach it to our friends. We have to be a part of growing this kingdom. It has to grow. It cannot. It cannot stop. Around us or within us, you don't hurt the kingdom. The blessings that come to you, you hurt it, it will destroy you. You can't hold it, it has to be taught. And that's why you have to learn so you can teach. Paul admonished Timothy, teach it, they teach these things. Teach these things. The, 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 don't let them, how do they put it? Don't, don't let them, don't, don't let them, the, the, the gift in you, you know, don't let it go down. That's the way he put it there. Teach it. Teach it to people. That way you grow. The more you teach, the more you grow. The more you share your faith, the more you grow. And that means you have to learn it. You have to learn it. We have to teach people. Hallelujah. Even the ass of our, remember the ass of our person, the you know, the Philippa, the you know, he was reading this thing and he couldn't get it. It, it. it would take someone that knows better to go in sometimes and teach it. And some people will tell you, ah, I did Bible knowledge in school. You, your Bible knowledge and what we are talking about is totally different. You read it like you read it normal. You know, I always say that the word of God is coded. And that's why the Bible said it's hidden. The word of God is coded. And that was what he meant by hidden. You have to decode it. And you can only decode it by the spirit of God. Amen. The only way to understand what that word is saying is by the spirit of God. By inspiration of the Holy Ghost. By revelation. That's the only way you can understand it. Otherwise, you just read it like a plain book. And it will not produce anything in your life. 
Hallelujah. The word of God has to be first. Let's look at just one scripture, Mark 16. For that kingdom to grow, we have to put ourselves out there. It has to be thought. It has to be thought. We have to share it. It can be only you. We have to teach it to people. Explain it. Teach it to our children. My children will be like, do we have to do this every day? Yeah. You know. We have to teach it to your children day and night. While you're walking, while you're sleeping. Even in the car, everywhere you're going to. It doesn't mean that you have the Bible that you're reading, that you're reading to them. But speak it. Every, every single thing that happened along the way, use it to. I know they always say me, Mom, everything. This one, too, you have to attach it to the Bible. Everything they see, they were watching something last night. I said, Okay, this one, now what did you get out of it? Do I have to really get something out of it? Yes. If you're not getting something out of it, then you don't need to watch it. That's true. You know? You don't have to. What did you get out of it? What, did, what is it doing to your spirit? That's right. What are you gaining? Is it just fun? You know? What are you getting out of it? It has to be thought. Mark 16. Praise the name of Jesus. It has to be thought. It cannot be only us. The word of God has to be thought. The kingdom of God is the word of God. And it has to be thought. The kingdom of God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Mark 16. Mark 16, 13. Oh, I'm sorry. Mark 16, 13 to 18. Let's do that again. Mark 16, 13 to 18. Okay, and they went and told it unto the res um, residue. This returned and reported it to the rest. That's the one I like. This returned and reported it to the rest. And 14 said, After later, Jesus appeared to the eleven, and they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Keep going. And he said to them, go into all the world. This is after Jesus resurrected. He appeared to them again. Now, this is where he's commissioning them to go into the world and teach this thing. It doesn't matter how old you are. I was speaking with a lady the other day that said her, her, her 10 year old, I think the man of God was there, her 10 year old cousin was praying over her, speaking in tongues. It doesn't matter. Make yourself available. You know, he said to them, go into all the world. Back. 15, please. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel, preach the good news to all creation. 16. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be what? Condemned. 17. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, you're not, you're, you're, you're not uh, ministering in your name. You're not going out in your name. Some of the things that put us back is what if I make a mistake? What if they laugh at me? What if I didn't say that? What if I don't know the verse to quote? You don't have to quote a verse. You know? If you know it, most of the time, if I don't know it, you know what I do? I'm going to say it. Everybody does that too. If I don't know where it is, I go to my phone, type it in, and it brings me the verse. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. You can do the same. Hallelujah. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. And see, they will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. That's why you should pray over your food. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Go on, 19. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God the Father for your sake and for my sake. And 20 said, What? Well, then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord walked with them and confirmed his word by signs that accompanied them. Hallelujah. Amen. That commission is not only for them, they're done. They have received the welcome, you good and faithful servant. If ours is still away, we still have work to do. That commission is not only for them, it's for us all. It doesn't matter where you are. The kingdom of God is still ongoing. Preach the gospel, preach the good news. Unto all nations, wherever you are, take trust. Talk to people. Let your children see you do it. Now, the, I was telling the, uh, the teachers, what we're going the teenagers, what we're going to do now is some Saturdays who will come out and go to places like uh, Kroger. Get some trust. And we need to teach them how to evangelize. We need to teach them how to teach. You know, preach. I'm not saying they will preach, but they have to learn this thing of how to communicate the gospel to their friends. 
Many of these great teachers and preachers we see today, many started at the age of 17. You know? Many, John Hayden started at the age of 7, at almost 18. He was telling his parents that as soon as I'm done, uh, as soon as I turn 18, I am out of this house. You all, I don't know what is wrong. I'm out of this house by the age of 18. And right before he turned 18, he had an encounter with the Lord. And that shall be the portion of all these children. Amen. Before that time comes, before the enemy snatch them away, they will have an encounter with the Lord. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Amen. And the last of them all, of this, he said, that kingdom has a code of conduct. That kingdom has a code of conduct. It's not just there. It's not a carefree kingdom. It's not whatever goes, goes. The kingdom of God has boundaries. The kingdom of God has boundary. And that boundary cannot be crossed. Ignorantly or consciously, it cannot be crossed. Remember the guy that the Ark of Covenant was about to fall. He touched it and gone. He, he did that out of his good heart. But the kingdom of God has boundary. The kingdom of God has a code of conduct. And that includes your moral standards. We all are part of this kingdom. We are the kingdom of God. We need to carry ourselves the way that this kingdom will be attractive to many. You can't just be yeah, 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 yeah kind of a person. Then you're ministering the gospel and they will look at you and they'll be so, oh, really? Your hair is all, all pink and all of that. And you're tired and you know, then you sure? You know, no. We, can, we cannot carry ourselves anyhow. We have to be careful. God is a God of standard. God is a God of intelligence. God is a God of excellence. The kingdom of God has code of conduct. Okay? Your moral standards, your social relationships, who are your friends, who are you associated with? You have a friend who is always going to club and you say, you know what, I wait in the car for you, you go. I'm not allowed to go in there, but I wait in the car for you. You waited and waited and waited, but you're seeing all those people half naked and all of them going in and going out. You know, how much can you endure? You know, who are your friends? The kingdom of God has conduct code of conduct, code of ethics that we have to follow. The kingdom of God, even your personal conduct, your own attitude, what is in your heart, how is your attitude, what, what kind of a thing takes you off, how short is your fuse, every little thing drives you crazy, how short is our fuse, what is your attire like, how are you dressed, Half naked and you're going to burn. You know, what makes me so upset is that men dress well, but we women that are supposed to cover up well, we're the one that messing, you know, exposing everything. How is your outfit? How are you dressed? I'm not talking about new converts. I'm not talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about people who are fully genuine Christian, born again 20 years ago. You know, I'm talking about genuine Christians. Children of God, <coughs> some things should make us uncomfortable to wear. Some things should, there's the way that we should go out and I, I, I finished dressing up. You know, there's a, there was a time I used to do all of that. that at some point, you go, who are you trying to impress? I'm not saying don't do it. Do it but light. Don't showcase everything. Don't make it look like the whole place is, you know, who are we trying to impress? If you have to do it, do it. It's fine. That's what we do. We are beautiful. Women, we like to dress ourselves up. Okay? I looked 